We're all aware of the bells, whistles, and features available on a four or five hundred dollar motherboard, but what about on a hundred and sixty five dollar motherboard? Welcome back to DIY Garage. I'm your host, Kerry Holzman. Today, joining us, JJ from ASUS. Hey, JJ. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I see you've brought a motherboard with you today. I have, and I, I think this is actually one of my favorite motherboards for the Z170 base platform. Why? Um, historically, you know, we, we do a lot of different presentations here, and we just did one for the really high-end Rampage 5 10th Anniversary Edition board. Which I think was my favorite. Yeah, it's an absolutely amazing board, and of course, when you talk about, you know, having the best of the best, it's easy to be able to talk about all these different features and functions. But for a lot of builders out there, they're looking kind of for that sweet spot, right? It's the same thing that happens within graphics cards where you don't necessarily want to spend a huge amount of money, right? But at the same time, you want to get something that's got great features, great functionality, great performance, and maybe even some really nice aesthetic design to it, right? And I think that this board really nails all of those points so that it's going to be a great foundation for first-time builders, seasoned builders, or even builders that are trending to kind of go with a more tailored kind of aesthetic for their systems as well. Well, let's talk about the aesthetic a little bit. What mm -hmm. makes this board special aesthetically? as though we can't see for ourselves, right, right. but let's point it out. Yeah, so uh, this actually replaces our current Z170 uh, Pro Gaming board, and this edition is called the Aura. So uh, with it being Aura, as many of our other products that now have that designation, that means that we've incorporated some form of RGB lighting onto the board. Um, now, with incorporating that, at the same time, we want to be able to go ahead and refine the overall uh, color scheme for the board. So you can see that we, instead of in the previous generation where we had black and red, which worked well and it looked great, we wanted to go with a little bit more of a monochromatic color scheme. And the reason why is that that complements the RGB lighting which is here on the side of the board. Oh, okay. And that gives you just a little bit more flexibility if you want to trend towards silver, white, or uh, black, which are generally your predominant color chassis. This board is going to work really well in either one of those chassis configurations. Uh, and also the white, I think, gives you a nice kind of subtle contrast that brightens up the board that also works well if you're going to go within a white chassis. So I think overall the, the look and feel of the board feels modern and fresh and clean, and I really like this color aesthetic. Now, there's something special you told me about uh, before we started recording that's unique to this board in the offering the customization. Because what's happening is a lot of things are now being done for users by the manufacturers. You just mm -hmm. buy it, take it out of the box, plug it in, yep. but it's already been modded. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh, for, for many people that are lazy like myself, a pre mod's great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just make up that word well, now, pre-mod. The, the choice. I think, I think we've entered into an era for the DIY user that having a wide range of different options that are pre-manufactured really make the overall building process more seamless and easy in terms of color coordination and accessory coordination. Yeah, it really can convince people you knew what you were doing when you put it all together. <laughs> sure. And uh, uh, what you've done here, though, is while this board, as you mentioned, has the built-in RGB lighting, which mm -hmm. is something we used to have to do manually if we wanted that look, you go, well, what's left for me to do if you're one of those people that wants to give it your own flavor, your own twist? Yep. Tell us how you've addressed that. So uh, we've really been looking to continue our innovation. And so the way that we've done this is essentially offering the full s the first fully supported 3D printing motherboard. So what do we mean by 3D printing on a motherboard? Of course, everything's already on the motherboard per se. Um, so what we've done is essentially we've gone and we've developed uh, a number of different source files that users can go ahead and take and utilize with uh, their 3D printer. Or you can go to a number of different 3D hubs. Uh, so there's places online that you can essentially go and you can put your zip code and you can find closest uh, places that you can get these uh, 3D prints uh, completed at. And we have all different types of options. So we've got, take for instance, if you want to make your own custom IO shroud, you can print that out. If you want to be able to actually print uh, an actual M.2 fan holder so that you can place a, a 40 millimeter fan to directly provide maximized airflow to that uh, M.2 SSD, you can do that. If you want to print cable combs, you can do that. If you want to print a custom nameplate, many users like to name their systems, you know, like maybe sure. it's the Dark Knight, right, or Subtle Red, the beast. right, or whatever it might be, you could print that out and you could mount it directly onto the motherboard. In fact, we've actually got uh, these little screws that come included that allow you to uh, mount the actual naming plate to the system. Uh, we actually even have uh, something that allows you to clean up the cabling so you can mount it directly over the 24 pin power and then cover any cabling that might be uh, going into the actual cable writing point in the chassis. So this is, I think, a really innovative um, option that we're offering to users for the first time to be able to take their customization and the look and feel to the systems to the next level. So if I understand you correctly, there are files mm -hmm. that you download, or they're on the driver disk? Or? Uh, they're actually directly on our forum site, so they can go to our RG forum site, okay. and they're directly available there for download. And those are the, the ones you mentioned, mm -hmm. they're already available. If you have a 3D printer, you simply yep. just download the file, and your printer will print, if you have a 3D printer, Correct. will print out these 
uh, shields or covers. Yeah, or essentially just plates. a number of different onboard motherboard accessories. Or a fan holder, and that's what the screws are for if you, d if you print out the fan holder. Mm -hmm. But because it's a forum, that means that people can interact and perhaps create their own Correct. creations and share and them And they with can others. provide feedback to us if they're looking for dimension information. And we've actually already uh, even released more files for other motherboards, like our Sabre 2 series or ROG series of motherboards. So we're really hoping that this is just the start of something really interesting and creative for a lot of users out there in the community. Is there any potential for harming the computer by putting these covers on? Could you Can you damage the board? Tell me a little bit about the the quality of the board? Um, in terms of the overall build quality, you're going with an ASUS series motherboard. So here, so it's proven in terms of that. All the onboard component quality is extremely high end. It's designed for long-term reliability and durability. So when you talk about the quality of the capacitors, they're full solid state capacitors. You've got great MOSFETs and drivers. You've got a digital power delivery design here to be able to ensure that you not only have great operation and efficiency at stock, but also overclock settings. You can go in there and tune all those parameters if you want better stability and reliability. And underneath it all, we actually have an implementation in terms of our design that's called Gamers Guardian. And that ha covers everything from specialized ESD diodes that we put on the actual I.O. plane uh, to actually the front headers uh, to specialized surge, uh, surge circuitry that we built onto the board and things like the LAN ports and so many other things to be able to account for a lot of the, let's say, the normal wear and tear that can exist as you use a system. So uh, when you talk about the overall build quality, you can feel confident you're going to have a reliable and stable system. That's been my experience with ASUS boards. You know, they, 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 I would describe them as being very robust mm -hmm. and having a very wide range of tolerance. Yep, definitely. And given that, that's really what you want when you want to do overclocking. This mm -hmm. is a Z170 chipset. Mm -hmm. That's one of the key differences between like a B or A series chipset is being able to overclock the CPU and have higher DRAM divider support. So when we talk about overclocking, how's that accomplished? So really, really cool thing for this generation is this board fully supports our, uh, our auto tuning technology as well as full manual overclocking. So if you buy a K-series CPU and you're looking to just get better performance from it, you've got two easy options. You can jump into the UEFI and if you know everything, then you can manually tune all those parameters. Uh, you can also take advantage of some quick, easy wizards or presets that we have built in there if you okay. don't necessarily want to jump into the operating system. But what we're big advocates of is going to be our auto tuning technology, which is essentially a software interface within Windows that you install but it works on a direct hardware and firmware level. So this will automatically overclock the CPU, it'll adjust the multiplier, your voltages, it'll keep account of temperatures. You can find target parameters such as the clock frequency, the amount of voltage you want to supply, even the target temperature that you want the CPU to be under load. You can enable things like memory stress testing and even advanced AVX instruction sets if you think you might be doing things like gaming, but also maybe doing some video editing on the system at the same time. So it's an extremely... XMP. Uh, XMP is actually automatically enabled. So when you go about the overclocking, if you drop in an XMP kit, if let's say it overclocks your system to 4.4 gigahertz and you've got DDR2600 memory, it, just takes care of it, it. automatically will automatically uh, apply the XMP profile. And we're talking about the auto tuning now. That's correct. So mm -hmm. what you're offering here is, is like a car that if you want it in automatic, you get mm -hmm. it, and if you want it in manual, you can have it manually. You can have it you both ways. It. And I'd even say that it's kind of even like the latest generation, like uh, specialized automatic transmission systems you see in really high-end sports cars, where they even give you more specialized performance presets. Sure. Yeah, because here, really, the granularity and control is really something that's never been done before uh, historically with any type of automated utility. So having users be able to click what they want and have the board automatically do it for them, I think it allows for the easiest realization of value, that if you spend money on high-quality memory, high-quality CPU, and a cooling solution and power supply, you can realize that all simply by using the utility. One of the other issues I've run into as a PC builder is when I have more fans than I have fan headers for the board. And ASUS is generally, in, in the, as I recall, very generous with the fan headers on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we talking about for fan connectivity on this? So with this board, it's using the latest generation of our fan connection. So this is fan expert. So every single one of these headers is going to give you the ability to have three pin and four pin support. So DC and PWM. We offer our automatic fan calibration technology so we can find out their minimum, their maximum uh, operating curves. You can click uh, simple preset options so that if you want to have silent operation or uh, better cooling, you can hit standard. You can go in there and control the fan response curves. Um, you do have some temperature input mapping options as well. So not everything just has to be linked to the CPU. You could have it be linked to do right. uh, other temperature points that are on the motherboard. And uh, I think one of the coolest things is actually this accessory, which I know you're a fan of, uh, in terms I'm of, a fan. of, of I'm adding a fan of more this. fans uh, to your system. And that's going to be the fan extension card. Now, this motherboard doesn't come included with it, uh, but it is a fully uh, supported optional accessory. So you're going to see that you've got a lot of different fan headers on here. But maybe if you want to be able to improve your cable routing flexibility, or you just want a, a larger number of total fans, or maybe you want group fans.
fans uh, for let's say two or three front intake fans or for fans that might be on a radiator. You've got this where you can attach it directly to the motherboard. It gives you three more fans that can be run uh, or you can use it like a PWM splitter board and it even gives you three more optional temp sensors so that if oh. you want to maybe put that to a graphics card or to an SSD or hanging ambiently in, uh, in a portion of your chassis or maybe in your HD array, you can essentially have your fans respond directly to those temperature points. How many total fan headers does the board have? The board has five fan headers. And so with the addition of the uh, extension card, you get three more. You get three more. But uh, like we've offered in previous generation boards that give you the ability to output to a PWM, you also want to keep in mind that each one of the fan headers essentially can support more than one fan. Uh, you would, can utilize things like a PWM slow air cable, where if you set that into the PWM output mode, you could have, let's say, two or three fans that are running from one single header that are being controlled by the motherboard, but they might be powered actually by the power supply. And those three fans, we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. uh, ASUS permits those fans to all run at identical speeds, but it's not just high speed on all the time. Correct. I mean, essentially, uh, those fans are all receiving the same mirrored PWM signal. So in that regard, if you have those fans operating, let's say, you know, moderate fan speed, 1200 RPM, they would all generally run at that same exact fan speed. And essentially, they're just being powered uh, by the power supply. So another really important part of a full, complete system is your sound card. Mm -hmm. So what uh, sound is being provided with this board? So sound is always a focus in terms of the pro gaming series and definitely ROG boards uh, and ASUS in general. So here we have our Supreme FX audio design. It's really what a lot of gamers have come to be very comfortable with and expect on an enthusiast oriented board. So you have the full isolated audio pass. So that means that we separate the audio section from the rest of the motherboard. We've got audio grade capacitors. We have an operational amplifier in there to be able to punch up and offer some more dynamic sound stage for your headphones. Uh, you've got a shielded audio codec on there and we even have a deep pop filter in there, which is important because when you restart the system, this can minimize essentially popping that you can get through your speakers. So you've got a really solid, improved audio experience there. So regardless of whether you're gaming, listening to your music, watching some music, or excuse me, watching some videos or movies, uh, you're going to get a really solid audio experience. So the, and that's that's great, especially when you're, I'm thinking in terms of gaming, mm -hmm. you know, when you in terms of gaming, you, you want power, yep. you want obviously the, the performance, you want good audio, mm -hmm. and you need good networking. Definitely. Tell me about the networking. So in networking here, we've continually focused at uh, leveraging Intel NICs. Uh, they're pretty much like the gold standard, uh, not only just amongst networking enthusiasts, but definitely the gaming community. Uh, it offers ex outstanding UDP performance, which is really important for online gaming. Uh, of course, the Intel NIC has a really mature driver stack, which gives you a lot of management options to be able to fine tune specific to your network environment. But tying into that also is that we have our game first packet priority software. So this is great because you can go in there and uh, automatic automatically adjust different parameters of how that application works in real time. So if you want to essentially have, you know, you're playing Battlefield online, you're playing Call of Duty, you're playing, you know, Dota, whatever it might be, that game will essentially always be at the primary in terms of what's being processed on your system. And then in the background, maybe if you're downloading something, you're streaming, you're doing other things like that, you can control essentially what's dynamically occurring. The cool thing is that within this generation too, we has also built in um, algorithm and logic that can do this automatically. So if you don't want to go in there and customize things, um, we'll essentially automatically do all the load balancing for you, which generally prioritizes heavy streams uh, above anything else. So if it, all of a sudden you start streaming on YouTube or Twitch, or you start doing gaming, it's going to automatically set that to a priority. And we also have it linked into a backend database that automatically profiles games engines. So as soon as the game comes on, it knows essentially I should be automatically recognizing this. Nice. And I'm, and I'm looking here on the side, I see there's six SATA ports I see here. Mm -hmm. And we previously talked about the M.2 with regards to the 3D printing, so there's obviously an M.2. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming PCI Express times 4, yep, NVMe. You have, you have full support for the fastest M.2 SSDs that are out there on the market. And like always, we want to be able to focus on ideal placement. So we don't have it directly underneath the graphics card. Right. We don't have it directly underneath the CPU. So we don't want to have it close to those heat zones. So it's isolated over there to be able to get a little bit more intake airflow crossing over it and make sure you get great performance. And tying that in, of course, with the SATA means that you've got a really solid storage system along with, of course, support with, in general, PCIe-based devices. And one of the cool things I like also in looking in terms of the PCIe is you'll see these slots also are our updated uh, safe slot designs, which is another improvement from previous generations. So you get more torsion resistance, overall better strength in terms of your PCI slots. Yeah, on the uh, PCI Ex Express slots here, we've got this metal shielding around it. Mm -hmm. uh, and on, on these, these first two here, which I guess are going to be primarily for two video cards, those are going to be your heaviest cards that could potentially break 
Yeah, and in most situations, you know, the reality is that for the vast majority of users, even the previous generation, the slots were extremely reliable and robust. It wasn't as though there was any concern. Um, but we developed these new, uh, actually, injection molding processes um, that we worked in collaboration for our uh, industry partners that do send systems that are very large and complex and have a lot of weight. And so it's just a way of it even being able to add superior reliability and durability to the boards. And it's really the details that really make the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that comes to mind, uh, something you had mentioned recently, was the BIOS chip. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, you don't see this too often anymore. No, it's actually, it's, it's a little bit more expensive to implement, but historically, you know, in a worst case scenario, maybe you get a surge, spike, or brownout, or something like that, uh, this chip could be potentially affected, and if it's soldered onto the board in the way that many vendors actually uh, implement it, you're essentially, you're stuck. You send the board you'd back, have to send you wait your a couple weeks. Yeah. Exactly, and you'd have to wait. Uh, but in our situation, because this is essentially a removable chip, you could contact our service department, they could send you a new one, you could drop it in there, and you'd be good to go. It just pops out, plugs a new one in, exactly. done. Don't have and to be a rocket scientist. Exactly, and there's the, a lot of other nice little th details that we bake into the board that essentially improve the quality, improve the experience. You know, you've got our, our quick designs, which are everything from extra wide latches to, you know, the open-ended slots on the DRAM, to even right here, actually, on our QLED diagnostic system, which is a nice way that when you're first getting everything installed, you can see LEDs for the CPU, for the DRAM, for the graphics card, for the boot device, and letting you know, hey, if I run into an issue, it'll lock red so that I can quickly go to that point, get my system back up and running. Well, let's talk a little bit about the software that comes with the, Pro, the Z170 Pro Gaming Aura. Yeah, I, I mean, it's great. I mean, we've already highlighted a couple of, I think, of the key software pieces. So we have the Game First Packet Priority software. We've got the Auto Tuning, which is part of our AI Suite 3. With AI Suite 3, you get a lot of different things that are already built in there. That's also how you interact with our Fan Expert software for all the fan calibration and profiling. It's how you can do integrated UEFI updating. Uh, you can also do monitoring, and you can check all the different parameters of your system. Uh, we even have actually a push notice uh, notification system in place so that if you want to be able to get like a notification on your smartphone or your tablet, when different things aren't working on your system, like maybe there's a voltage drop or the fans aren't spinning or things like that. There's a lot of really cool pieces that are built into uh, the overall software system. And uh, one of the other really cool ones is actually for the audio piece. We have our Sonic Radar software. So for gamers out there that are doing a lot of competitive uh, first person uh, games online, you essentially can have a visualization map that's in place that lets you know where the uh, direction of fire is coming from. So if let's say you're in Counter-Strike and you're turning the corner on a map, we can actually show you where the bullets are coming from visually, so um, this can work in conjunction with the great audio design and good headphones. It can really help you to kind of know the lay of the land so that if you want to take a corner, you want to try to flank somebody or go in a different direction, you can do that. So some a really cool, I think, and useful uh, set of software that comes included with the board. And what about any accessories? In terms of accessories, uh, one of the really cool things with this being uh, part of the RG family is that you're going to have the ability to interface with our RG front base. So the RG front base will actually connect uh, directly to the front HD audio connection and then a USB port. And the reason why you would want to do that as opposed to connecting to the front HD audio connection that's in a chassis is that most chassis, the actual cable is not shielded and it doesn't offer true stereo separation. So we have a much higher quality shielded stereo cable that connects directly to this and then connects to the front base, which you mount into a five and a quarter bay. Uh, the cool part about that is you're going to get higher quality of audio because you're directly maximizing our audio design, but you also have a number of different options like quick presets so that if you want to change uh, to audio presets that are optimized for certain games, so like racing versus is action and RPG versus first person shooting, you can do that. You also have profiles that you can switch in terms of performance and a lot of other visual information that's presented on that screen. So it's a, a very cool accessory uh, that's only available on ASUS oriented products and that you can have on this board. So that's an option for this board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is it like an external uh, audio card or is it just extending the existing audio card to the front? It's essentially fully realizing the integrated audio solution that we have. In itself it has no audio based processing but what it allows you to do is essentially bypass that poor quality cabling that you have in your chassis. And give you easier access to a front port you know, mm -hmm. Correct. connection mm -hmm. for headphones for example or a microphone. Mm -hmm. Alright well very good. Well listen thanks so much as always for coming in and telling us all about the latest the Z170 let me make sure I get the name right Pro Gaming Aura. You got it. That's going to wrap up this episode of DIY Garage, and if you enjoyed it, please let us know by clicking like and subscribe. For Newegg TV and DIY Garage, I'm Kerry Holzman, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.